Consumption is one of the biggest theme in India to create wealth in the next 10-20 years. And one sector that perfectly fit into this consumption theme is QSR sector. That is quick service restaurant. Let's be honest, we Indians love food. In fact, I recently did a post on my biggest expense which is travel where many people commented that food is their biggest expense. Now if you observe, in last 10-20 years, there's a huge change in food habit of Indians. First of all, earlier we would hardly go out for lunch or dinners. In fact, even I can personally relate to it. I remember when I was young, we would hardly dine out, only on special occasions. But now we visit restaurants frequently, and I'm sure you all could relate to it. Due to rising income and spending level, the frequency of eating out among Indians has increased significantly. Initially, this dine-out trend was more prominent in metro cities, but it has now trickled down to tier 2 cities and eventually it will trickle down to tier 3 cities and below. Then second big trend I've observed is change in taste preference. Today's youth loves fast food including burgers, pizzas, and they love to spend time in such QSR chains. Then third big trend is lack of time. Especially in the metro cities where both husband and wife are working and busy with their work life, they do not have a lot of time to cook food. So they have increased eating out. And to put cherry on the top, the rise of online food delivery has amplified the growth of food business as it has become very easy to order food at home with few clicks. In short, India with its 140 crore population with more than 50% people below the age of 25 years is a perfect destination for all top international QSR chain including your Domino's, KFC, Pizza Hut, McDonald's and so on. Needless to say, QSR chains are growing their footprints in India big time. Now when it comes to investment in QSR chain, we have multiple public listed companies in India including Jubilant Food, Devyani International, Sapphire Food, Westlife Food World and Restaurant Brand Asia. Although majority of these QSR chain have recently got listed on the exchanges. But the oldest one is Jubilant Food that got listed in around 2010 and since its listing, it has created amazing wealth for its investor right from levels of 23 rupee to touch a peak of 900 creating almost 40 times return in 12 years. However, it has been struggling since last two years where the share price is currently down around 40% from its peak. Remember, this correction is when the entire Indian stock market is trading at an all-time high. In fact, it's not just jubilant. Devian International got listed at 118 in August 21 and quickly touched a high of 190. And since then, there is no return in last 20 months. Same story with Sapphire Food that launched its IPO in November 21 and since then, there is practically no return in last two years. Westlife, on the contrary, has grown nearly three times in last four years. Then, restaurant brand Asia got listed in February 22 and since 18 months, it has been trading flat. The question here is, when there is so much of potential in QSR chain, then why majority of QSR companies are struggling to create wealth for its shareholder in the last two years? And whether this correction in QSR is a golden opportunity to accumulate them at current levels? Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. In today's video, we will discuss the opportunity to create wealth in the QSR sector of India, where we will explore the major QSR chains in India, their growth journey so far, along with future plans for expansion. More importantly, we'll try to understand the reason behind the sharp correction in QSR stocks in last two years, especially when the Indian stock market is at its all-time high. I think this will give you a fair idea about the overall picture of QSR segment and whether it is the right time to add these QSR companies or probably worth waiting for some more correction. We'll figure out in this video. But before that, just a gentle reminder, this video is only for educational purpose. I encourage each one of you to do your own research before investing. All right, let's get started. So basically, there are three key QSR companies in the world, Domino's, Yum Food, and McDonald's. They are the three global giants. Domino's and McD, we all know. But Yum Food is basically the parent company of Pizza Hut, KFC, and Costa Coffee. Apart from this, you also have Subway, Burger King, Starbucks, and so on. Now, in terms of total number of stores in the world, Yum is number one with more than 55,000 outlets across brand. This is as of 2022. Then MACD is second with around more than 40,000 stores and Domino's is third with around 20,000 stores. Together, they have more than 1,15,000 stores all over the world. These QSR chains mainly operate on franchisee model where they select the Indian partner for master franchisee where they get the royalty and franchisee fee and then 
these Indian companies provide sub franchisee to the retail outlet. So that's their business model. Now, if you look at the QSR landscape in India, it is still a highly underpenetrated market with only three store per million population. As compared to that, China has 13 store per million people. Now you can imagine the potential. By the way, these QSR companies entered in India and China at similar time during 90s. However, the growth trajectory of China has been much faster than India. However, now the situation is changing and it is expected that QSR chain can double from current levels by 2030 in India to make it six stores per million people. Now there's an interesting data point. As per research, the top 30 cities in India contribute around two thirds of the total store network of these QSR chain, while these 30 cities contribute less than 15% of total India's population. What does it mean? Only one third of the total QSR network is present outside these top 30 cities that contribute more than 85% of population. And these top 30 cities already have around 15 store per million population and above. So for the incremental growth, these QSR chains have, have to move out of these top 30 cities. Now as per research, the yearly addition during 1995 to 2005 was 25 store that got increased to 125, then 300, then 475 between 20 to 23 and now expected at 550 stores per year between 2023 to 30. Now within India, Domino's has given the master franchisee to Jubilant Food which is the parent company of Domino's India and this is an exclusive master franchisee. So no other company apart from Jubilant can run Domino's chain in India. Then Yum Food has two franchisee owners in India, Devyani International and Sapphire Food. Then MACD has given its South and West India franchisee to Westlife Food World. So except for Jubilant Food Work, none of them have an exclusive master franchisee. Now in terms of store mix, Jubilant is the leader with nearly 48% of total QSR stores among these four companies, followed with Devyani with 26%, Sapphire with 16% and MACD with 9% store. So MACD has the lowest concentration so far. In terms of distribution network, Domino's is again leading with around 400 cities in its network followed with Divyani with 240 cities, then Sapphire and then MACD. Since MACD has a concentrated presence in bigger cities, it also enjoys higher revenue per store. Apart from this, the existing QSR players in India are not only dependent upon a single brand, they are also collaborating with other brands and in fact even building their own brands. For instance, Jubilant Foodwork has presence in pizza segment with Domino's, but it has also identified the growth potential in fried chicken category. So it has partnered with Popeye to compete with Yum Brands KFC. That has also taken master franchisee of Dunkin Donut. And it has also launched its own brands like Egdam in Biryani, then Hong's Kitchen in Chinese food, and has also launched its Chef Boss that offers a range of ready to eat pastas and gravies. And Jubilant is also expanding outside India in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Although Domino's is still the biggest contributor to its business with more than 95% revenue coming out of Domino's and out of nearly 1900 stores, 1840 stores are of Domino's. So that is still dominated by Domino's. Then Devyani International has also expanded beyond Pizza Hut, KFC and Costa Coffee. It has launched its own brand called Wango that offers South Indian food and also another brand, Street Food. It is aggressively expanding its Wango network. Moreover, Devyani has also entered into Nigeria and Nepal. So it's also expanding its international presence and today has around 1,300 stores. In case of Devyani, KFC is their most potential business. Pizza Hut has been struggling with strong competition from Domino's, which is way ahead of Pizza Hut. Then Sapphire also operate Yum brand franchisee of KFC, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell with around 780 stores and uh, presence in India, Sri Lanka and Maldives. Interestingly, Sapphire is the largest QSR chain in Sri Lanka with around 114 stores, mainly of Pizza Hut. Then Westlife Food World operate chain of McDonald's in Southern and Western India with a network of 375 stores. Although McD has a huge presence in the international market, it has limited focus on Indian market, but now it is planning to grow at its faster rate from historically around 25 stores per year to now 35 to 40 stores per year. Then you also have restaurant brand Asia which is the franchisee of Burger King and Popeye with around 400 stores in India and 190 stores in Indonesia. I hope you got a fair idea of QSR sector of India. Now let us try to understand the reason for slowdown in Indian QSR sector. 
So broadly, there are two reasons for correction in QSR stocks. First reason is demand normalization. So after COVID, QSR stocks witnessed a huge pent up demand as people started to go out. As a result, QSR companies made good profit. But then eventually, the demand started normalizing. On top of that, the high inflation also impacted consumer sentiment, especially in tier 2 and below cities, and they reduced the discretionary spending. Hence, it impacted the top line of QSR company. Then second reason is high inflation impacted the margin. So post-COVID when food inflation started rising, it directly impacted the raw material cost for QSR companies and badly impacted their margin. For instance, in case of jubilant food, cheese is their key raw material that contribute nearly 30 to 35% of their raw material cost and dairy sector has witnessed sharp inflation. So due to demand normalization, the top line got impacted and due to high raw material cost, the bottom line got impacted and basically both revenues and profits witnessed correction. Now the question is, is the worst over for QSR companies? So we have the quarterly result of Jubilant Food and its revenue growth has been sluggish at around 5.6% year on year. Margins have shown some improvement of 97 basis point, but overall the inflationary pressure continued to persist. We have already seen crazy jump in tomato prices. Then Devani International Revenue have grown at 20% uh, year on year and its EBITDA stood at 20.5 versus 20% in Q4. Then Sapphire Food Revenue is also up 20% year on year, but EBITDA is down by 150 basis point. Westlife Food World has seen around 14% growth in revenue and its EBITDA has been unchanged at around 17.1% year on year. So overall the inflation problem continued to persist and that has impacted the bottom line of these QSR companies. Now this inflation is an external event. So fundamentally, there is no problem with these QSR companies. Eventually, when the inflation will normalize, the margins will improve. But stock market is always forward looking. So by the time situation would improve, these stocks might already be touching all time high. Although in terms of valuation, you will find these QSR companies at crazy PE ratio. For instance, Jubilant PE is 127, Devyani PE is 98, Sapphire Food PE is relatively low at 39, Westlife Food World PE is around 124, so please understand that these are all growth stock with huge expansion plans in the next 5 to 10 years. And currently these companies are in the process of setting up stores with and that will eventually get matured and would start contributing in the top line and bottom line. For example, Jubilant had 1265 stores in FI19 that got increased to 1370 then 1400, 1600. In FI23 it's expected to grow at nearly 1900 and by FI26 it's expected to grow to 2,800 store. Then Devani stores have grown from 500 to 600, 890, 1180 and expected to grow to 1,800 store by FR26. Sapphire has grown from 300 to 360, 480, 600 and expected to grow to 950 stores. Westlife has grown from 290 to 326 and expected to grow to 490 stores. So P ratio would not be a right criteria to look at the valuation. If you look at the price to sale, Jubilant price to sale is 6.5, Devyani price to sale is 7.25, Sapphire is 3.6, Westlife food price to sale is 6.1 and restaurant brand Asia price to sale is 2.8. Again, every company has its own growth plan. So lowest price to earning or lowest price to sale does not necessarily mean cheapest valuation. Now I had a look at the shielding pattern and found that institutional investors are showing a lot of interest in these QSR companies. In Jubilant, DIs have consistently increased take from 10 to 11, 15, 17, all the way to 23%. Although FIs are the net seller during this period, promoter holding has been constant and public holding did increase last year, but it has been constant in last six quarter. In case of Divyani, both FIs and DIs are adding stake and public holding has reduced significantly from 24 to 16%. Sapphire Food also has same story, crazy buying from both DIs and FIs and DIs stakes are up from 8 to 29%. FI is up from 15.5 to 18.6%. Look at the sharp fall in public holding in last seven quarter. In Westlife Food, there's not much change in shareholding in last few quarter. So overall it seems institutional investors are bullish on QSR theme and adding them in their portfolio systematically. The biggest reason is amazing growth prospects in Indian QSR sector and that is still under penetrated. The next five to 10 years would see much faster growth. And it is not just one company. All five companies that I've discussed, including Jubilant, Devyani, Sapphire, Westlife Food and restaurant brand Asia would continue to grow their store network. 
So it's not easy to pick one company out of this. All five companies have equal growth potential. Yes, in the short term, they might not generate great returns due to the ongoing inflation, but in the long term, there's multi-bagger return potential in these QSR stocks. Having said this, it's not a cakewalk to crack the Indian food market. There are multiple challenges. For instance, QSR companies would have to adapt with the taste preference of Indians that changes from state to state. Then QSR companies would have to keep innovating in terms of their menu card as well as customer retention strategy to generate more consumer interest. Then third, they have to figure out an ideal balance between dine out versus online food delivery. And finally, there is already a lot of competition in Indian food industry with multiple cuisines, multiple brands trying to eat pie of Indian QSR market and stiff competition from local existing players. So with this, I would let you decide whether you find the QSR sector attractive or not. And let me know in the comments, which is your preferred stock from this QSR sector. I hope you'll find this analysis useful. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.